Good morning, Church. Um, we are here this morning to um, bring to you our Wednesday service, which is our midweek service, and I will start with prayer. Almighty God, you are our certainty in this time of uncertainty. We find ourselves at home, isolated, as we have watched the world shut down around us. We ask for your peace and comfort on us all, reminding us that even when we can't gather together, we can still worship from our homes because we are all your children and the body of the church. Lord, may we show love and support to our families, friends, neighbours and strangers alike. We pray for our loved ones and we pray that our love for the most vulnerable in our community becomes a beacon of hope for all. Lord, the wonder of it all is amazing how you love us when we have sinned and erred from your teachings. Father, we ask for your forgiveness and send the Holy Spirit to guide and protect us through this coronavirus. Please give comfort to them that have fallen ill and to the families of those that have sadly passed away. We thank you that we are able to receive these messages streamed to our homes by modern technology and we ask that you bless all those making this possible, also our family, friends, health workers on the front line, school teachers helping to get our children back to normal after isolation, and all others that have suffered from the loss of wages or unemployment. Lord, we know your son Jesus was a healer and we ask these prayers be answered through him. Amen. Now I'd like to call on Ben to give us our reading for this morning. Thank you, Ben. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wednesday Church. Uh, it's been a really good, great week. Thank you, Paul, for calling us up. So I'll be reading Romans 5, 1 to 8. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that sufferings produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. So now I'll call Johnson to come and share his message with you and I hope to see you next time. God bless. Uh, good morning, church. Uh, today's our midweek service, uh, Wednesday, and uh, we just want to thank God that we are able to worship continuously even when we are in... Uh, under lockdown, but uh, it's really important for us to know that God is allowing us to do these things. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. As we are gathered here, we are gathered in different places. Help us to hear your word. Help us, Lord Jesus Christ, to understand what you want us to do. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. My theme today is getting it right. From uh, our readings, that is uh, Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 8. Getting it right. If you ever notice that uh, no matter what, there are some people just always get it wrong. Paul Harvey, in his book, For What It's Worth, tells about a county jail in South Florida where jail officials found a plastic trash bag hanging to the bars of a cell. 
Inside was Jimmy Jones, a prisoner who hoped he had get to take out with the trash. And he might have, except for one thing, during roll call, his reflex took over. When the name J Jim Jones was called, from inside the bag came a muffled response here. It's strange, but some people just can't seem to get it right, can't they? We may not be able to get it right on our own, but the good news is that the Apostle Paul says we have made right with God. And that is very good news, especially for those of us who seem to get it wrong all the time, or at least most of the time. Do you hear that? You and I have made right with God through Christ. Think of that. We don't have to wonder whether we will be found acceptable when we stand before the throne of grace because we have been put right with God. We don't have to keep trying to end salvation because of what Christ has done for us. We is often to get it wrong. We have been made right. So how does this take place? How are we made right with God? Through faith. That's the first thing. Paul says we receive all this simply through faith. He writes, therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ in Romans 5 verse 1. For that's one of the key verses in this passage. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have been justified by faith. When the writer Winfield Huntley was asked by the, why the characters in her book, South Riding, were uniformly untrustworthy, she replied, I intend to make them good, but they won't, they would not be. That describes us. Let's face it. Most of us can't do and don't always do what is right or righteous. We miss the mark. We don't get it right. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3 verse 23. Consequently, there is a gulf between us and God. Our peace with God is destroyed. Christ is the one who bridges that gulf and restores our peace with God. In 1 Timothy 2 verse 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the, the man Jesus Christ. He is the mediator. Through our faith in Christ Jesus, we are given, we are forgiven and accounted righteous in God's eyes. Through our faith in Jesus Christ, we are declared innocent and we are acquitted of any wrongdoing. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. Ephesians 2 verse 8. Consequently, there is a gulf between us and God. Our peace with God is destroyed. Christ is the one who preaches that gulf and restores peace with God. The word of God says in John 15 verse 4 to 5, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can, can you except you abide in me. I am a vine, you are the branches. He that abide in me and I am in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. So we need to abide in Christ. We need to stay in Christ. For without him we can't do anything. So without Christ we are helpless. Through our faith in Christ, we are forgiven, accounted righteous in God's eyes. Through our faith in Christ, we are declared innocent and we are acquitted of any wrongdoing. For by the grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. Through our faith in Christ, we are declared guiltless and blameless. All of us are giant ages, are lined up and we can stand straight and tall before God because we are justified through Christ. So he's the only one who can justify it. Apart from Christ, that's not possible. Apart from Christ, we might think something is laid to rest, dead and buried. But then all of a sudden, it's night of the living dead. The guilt of our actions, the guilt of our sin, rise to hound us again and again. That's not the kind of resurrection Jesus was talking about. When it's done, it's all done. We are no longer people who are always feeling guilty. Jesus offers forgiveness and freedom from guilty. We are forgiven and made righteous. And that is what God has called us. Again, it is through trust in Christ. There is a scene in C.S. Lewis' book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Hotter, in which children ask about Aslan the Lion. If you have never read the wonderful stories of Nana Nia, Aslan is the Christ figure in Lewis' 
stories. The children at Aslan ask, is he safe? And the reply from the other characters is, of course he's not safe, but he's good. The same thing could probably be said about Christ. He looked safe. He looked harmless. But he turned out to be anything. But for he challenged his disciples. And he challenged us. He challenged us to trust in him completely and follow him. We need to trust Christ. Jesus challenges you to move beyond your comfort zone. Once again, he calls us like the disciples to step out of faith and follow him. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 2, 4, verse 13. It may not be safe, but it is a good thing. For when we put our faith and trust in Christ, and Christ alone, then we are justified before God. It is interesting to me that the world justified has three different yet major uses. First, it is a legal term, which means the opposite of condemn. It means to show or give satisfactory reason for having done something. Second, it is a printing term used to describe the process of taking the ragged edges out of the printing job by lining up both edges of the text and spacing the letters correctly. Most Bibles and newspapers are printed in this way. Third, it is a theological term which means to make one righteous through freeing them from the blame or guilt of sin through forgiveness. And all three apply. First, in John 3, 17, Jesus said, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Second, in the process of salvation, God strengthens up all our ragged ages and lines up our lives with scriptural holiness. I will go before thee and make the crooked place straight. In Isaiah 45, verse 2. Said, we are set free from the guilt of our sin and offered forgiveness. And that's a joyous thing if we simply trust and trust God. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1 verse 9. That tells us that Christ is the only one who can justify us. This justifying faith, trust brings the confidence in our future. As Christians, we believe tomorrow and will be better than my today. I've heard some one of the singers who always sing, my tomorrow is better than today. Which means he's believing in the future. Why? Because we believe that God holds the future. The light at the end of the tunnel is it an oncoming train. No, it is Jesus Christ. It is the light of God's glory. It is the light of Christ. We can have faith that even if we should do wrong, or if things go terribly wrong in our lives, God will continue to be faithful because God is always faithful. It is not unusual for horrible or just weird circumstances to yield beneficial results and be a means of bringing glory to God. A man once tried to kill Samuel Bringo by throwing a brick at his head. Bringo survived the attack, but at a long, convulsant time. During that period, he wrote many inspiring articles which were put into a book entitled Yours to Holiness. The book was a huge success. Later, his wife said, had there been no brick, they would have no book. She kept the brick and had some words from the Old Testament painted on it. The words were from Genesis 50 verse 20. Joseph spoke those words to the brothers who sold him into slavery and said, even though you intend to do harm to me, God intended it for good. Sometimes it happens just like that. Sometimes what we think is true, most tragic event that could have ever happened to us leads us to some later triumph. But even if it doesn't, there's two good news. Paul tells us that even when we see no beneficial results, at least with God's help, we can keep growing. Nothing that happens in this world is in vain if we entrust it to God. Nothing that you do is in, in vain. Most of us will say that some of the most valuable lessons we learned in life were learned through adversity. Sometimes just hanging on, not giving up, not giving in is all it takes to get it right. Paul put it like this, we boast in, in our suffering. Knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. 
Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us in Romans 3, verse 3 to 5. In conclusion, there is a story of how Louis the 12 of France treated his enemies after he ascended to the throne. Before coming to power, he had been cast into prison and kept in chains. Later, when he did become queen, he was urged to seek revenge, but he refused. Instead, he prepared a scroll on which he listed all those who had perpetrated crimes against him. Behind every person's name, he placed a cross in red ink. Well, when the guilt heard about this, they feared for their lives and fled. Then the king explained, The cross which I drew beside each name was not a sign of punishment, but a pledge for forgiveness and extended for the sake of the crucified Savior, upon which cross his cross forgave his enemies and prayed for them. What a good example. What a good analogy of what it means to be forgiven. We know what kind of lives we live. We don't always get it right. As a consequence, sometimes we lose all hope. We see the cross and think only of the judgment and the consequence of our action, and we are consumed by guilt. Sometimes that guilt gets in the way of accepting God's forgiveness, and we get the message all mixed up. When in actual fact, the good news is that all we really need is to trust God and trust the faith that we claim. I don't want it to be over it's simplified. But some people are terrified of being justified because they think they might be modified and their lives nullified. Well, you'll be gratified and I hope mollified to know that. When we are justified, we are not nullified, but rather dignified and classified and identified with the one who was crucified and glorified God. Our lives are purified and fortified by the one who exemplified God's life. And though we are mystified at how we can be justified by the faith to the one who has dissatisfied, we are edified. Our faith is intensified and revived. And that is what we need to know. Through our faith, we are satisfied, justified, and made bona fide child of God. I hope that clarified what it means to be justified and amplify the message testified by Paul. May the good Lord help you to understand how justification come about in your life. Once we are justified and find peace with God through faith in Christ, and when we have peace with God, we can follow his son anyway. Like the disciples, like all Christians, we are called to follow Jesus. And because we are justified by faith through Christ, we will be strengthened in every way to follow Christ. And that's the challenge. Getting it right simply means getting right with God. Getting it right with God. That's what it means. You need to have a good relation with Christ. That's it, what it means. You know it when you have got a relationship. You know it that you have got a good relation with Christ because you are obedient to his word. You are obedient to what he expects of you. So, I just urge you, have a good relationship with Jesus Christ. Have a good relationship with Jesus Christ. That's all you need, to be right with him. A good relationship. May the good Lord bless you this week as we are going on during this COVID season. God will bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Father, we unite with the whole world in praising you. Creator God, we come before you with gladness and thanksgiving. We praise your goodness. We praise your faithfulness. We praise your tenderness. We are yours and we worship you. We bless your name forever. Lord, you have called us to the privilege of service. But we have failed to save. You have given us the blessing of peace, but we have chosen discord. You have loved us as shepherds tends his sheep, but we have strayed from your way. Forgive us. Show us the path of obedience and faithfulness that your son trod. Be with us, Father.
Jesus said, go to save. Go to love. Go to bring healing. Go to bring peace. Go in the strength of the Father. Go in the power of Jesus. Go united by the Spirit. Go and know His grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you through and through. In Jesus' name, Amen.